Good morning, everyone. Today is March the 7th, uh, Tuesday, and uh, I want to talk to you about ENDPQ stock. I am still a holder of the stock, and uh, I am just as confused as everyone. Um, there were many people on the stock boards, which are never accurate information, uh, that were posting over the weekend that the stock was going to increase because there was a settlement of $548 million for the opioid and that everything would be wonderful. Well, the fact of the matter is, uh, now we're getting closer to that D-Day when supposedly the stock will be either canceled uh, or traded into these new codes that are being uh, uh, talked about on the stock boards and also in the documents for the um, Kroll company that uh, reports on the bankruptcy movement. Uh, I think the biggest thing to think about here is this company, NDPQ, really lured in investors like myself uh, with the Roe versus Wade uh, uh, cancellation. Uh, everyone was buying the stock because of the plan B uh, that was uh, on their website. So everybody thought that there was value with the company and that you know the stock was going to rise. Uh, but then we found out the company was going bankrupt from the Wall Street Journal, who has done an excellent job. Uh, and uh, you know the stock began to fall. And people like me um, started thinking about Hertz and other type of bankruptcies that have occurred prior and said, well, maybe this might be a good time to uh, average down, in which I did. So I own a substantial amount of shares right now, and the long and short of it is I'm not going to sell. Uh, it was a risk from the start after we heard that it was going bankrupt. Uh, it's still a risk, but uh, this is a big company, um, which I feel is uh, in a position to be sold off on this stalking horse bid, which is uh, basically the creditors have agreed to buy the company, uh, and then they're either going to resell it to someone else, or they're going to uh, grow the company. So the complicated things that have occurred are, number one, this par pharmaceutical uh, company, the India company, uh, seems to uh, not be in the um, bankruptcy. What does that do for the shares? Again, we can be scared to death constantly by the company actually posting, by law I believe, that it's likely that the shares will be worthless. So again, high, high risk. What is the truth here? Um, I would say the only truth is uh, probably going to be determined by a very smart bankruptcy attorney that can analyze this. And obviously, we've never attracted anyone that's a bankruptcy attorney to get involved with uh, informing us. So we're kind of at... Uh, the will of the courts. Uh, I believe that most of the courts are very fair. Uh, I believe that the, the downside here is they were involved with opioids and nobody uh, in the general public wants to see an opioid company survive. So these new co's, if they transfer the R stocks into their stocks, what are they gonna be worth? Maybe they'll put a par value higher than what ours are worth and we'll get pennies on the dollar of these new stocks. It's very complicated, but what if a good stalking bid actually comes in, as this guy Alex uh, always claims on uh, stock twits, and let's say it comes in for twelve billion. Well, it seems like we're already at about nine billion in debt. Um, so you know, three billion times the number of shares, two hundred and sixty-five million. You know, where's that gonna where's that gonna bring us? Very hard to say. So. I just wanted to make this video to tell people out there that, look, why am I holding my shares and just grabbing, not grabbing whatever I can? Um, because I, I'm not a gambler. I just feel as if what I've seen in the stock market, you know, the movement with Bed Bath & Beyond, the movement with so many companies, that it's worth just to hold on because the stock market is not necessarily based on the values of companies. It's based on how big players manipulate the stock. 
I've seen a lot of negative comments come out uh, on the stock boards, and that leads me to believe that uh, it's a sales pitch, you know, trying to get everybody to sell. I'm going to hold. Uh, would I be stupid enough to buy more? Um, we'll have to find out. Uh, what, is, what is that movie? It's stupid is, the stupid does. So, you know, I got here into playing the stock market by taking risk. Um, I'm going to continue my pattern of taking risk, and we'll see what happens. Of course, this is not my complete portfolio. Thank God. Uh, I'm wishing you all the best. I'm wishing you all uh, the opportunity to make comments on this video and give me feedback um, because this is a complicated one. But at the price that it's selling at now, if you haven't bought higher like I did, and if you haven't, uh, you know, spent all your capital, I don't know. I mean, you got to do what you got to do with a stock like this. I personally am going to take this risk. I never tell people what to do. I only tell people what I'm doing. I don't give financial advice. I'm a, I'm a layman. I'm not trained in, in this uh, field. So uh, do the best you can and uh, give me feedback. Give me any information you can and, and try to be nice. I don't mind the insults about being fat and need my teeth worked on and I'm an idiot and so forth. It doesn't bother me. So go at it. Thank you very much. Mark Nejma for Newsweed.com.